uh, pitching to the to the stars in the league is a is a great experience for me, and it's a it's a great challenge to me personally. Um, take for instance Willie Mays. Now uh, I used to go to San Francisco and watch Willie Mays when I was in high school, when I was in junior high. I used to watch him from the uh, from the stands, and uh, he was a tremendous ball player to me. And now when I've uh, go to the mound, I've got to get him out. I'm the one that has to try and get him out for this club. And uh, I try to uh, move the ball in and out on Willie and keep him uh, loose on the plate and keep the ball down. I think that he likes uh, he likes the ball up where he can, has a chance to get at it. And I try and throw uh, hard stuff away from him, uh, sliders down and away. And I try and throw fastballs down and uh, possibly have him uh, swing and miss or uh, hit the ball in the ground and, and get the ground ball. I think if uh, to Willie, if you get the ball up, he's got a good chance of, of getting the ball out of the park. Well, uh, the All-Star, being picked to the All-Star game wasn't uh, the biggest thrill that I've ever had in my entire life as far as, as baseball is concerned. Um, it was just a, a tremendous, it was like a dream being picked for the team. And as I sat in the bullpen, uh, the game kept going into extra innings and I felt that possibly a, if it went a few more, you know, I said, well, keep going and I'll have a chance to get in because uh, at one point it reached a point where Drysdale and, and Claude Osteen and myself were the only ones left in the bullpen and I felt that uh, uh, since Claude had pitched two days previous, uh, uh, 11 innings, I don't, I didn't think that he could, could pitch and so uh, I felt if Drysdale went in and, and the game went maybe up to 14 or 15 innings that I would get a shot. And then suddenly came his big chance. National League leads two to one, last of the 15th, and the kid gets the call to save the game. I believe Tony Caniglero was a first hitter, and uh, I tried to keep the ball in on him so he couldn't hit the home run, and uh, as a result, he hit a, he hit a fly ball left field, I think it was, and the next hitter was Jastrzemski, and I was going to be very careful with Carl, to tell you the truth. I didn't want to walk him. I mean, I didn't want to have a chance with, where he'd hit a home run. I'd rather have, I would have rather walked him, and as a Turned out I did walk him, and uh, he ended up on first base. And then uh, uh, Billy Freehand uh, I faced in spring training, and I felt that I was throwing uh, fairly hard. Then I felt that I could get the ball in on him and, and ran the ball in, and he, and he hit the ball to center field, a Willie caught. And then the uh, Ken Berry was a pinch hitter, and uh, he was the last uh, pinch hitter that the American League could have used. And uh, I remember before I left here New in, uh, from New York, Jack LeMabe told me, he said, throw Ken Burry fastballs inside and throw him sliders outside. And it kind of amused me to see him walking up there and I immediately recalled what Jack had told me. So I threw a fastball inside and a uh, slider away and a fastball and struck him out on four pitches and, and the game was over and it was chaos in the clubhouse and shaking hands. And the biggest thrill I think I had was uh, us going down the clubhouse steps and Henry Aaron slapped me on the back. As Seaver strikes out Carl Yastrzemski, Jose Askew, Boog Powell, Mickey Mantle, and Rick Mundy. Five strikeouts in two innings. July 9th, call it Seaver night. Seaver, the complete athlete, aids his own cause by knocking in a run in the second inning against the Cubs. On the mound, Seaver is almost perfect. His speed and control are brilliant. Ernie Banks is just one victim of his 11 strikeouts. He gets flawless support from his teammates before 59,083 fans, a record turnout in Shea Stadium. When he strikes out Al Spangler, he's pitched eight full innings of scoreless, hitless baseball. Nancy Seaver holds back her emotions as a huge crowd watches every pitch. The first Cub up in the ninth. Randy Hutley tries a spoiling bunt, but Seaver throws him out. Two outs to go to a perfect game. Jim Qualls, a rookie outfielder, is up. A clean hit to left center field, and there goes the perfect game. But there's a standing ovation for Seaver by 59,000 fans. It's still a near perfect game when Don Kessinger flies out to end it. And it's a vital victory for the Mets. Back to back wins shake up the Cubs. How can any pitcher have finer credentials than Tom Seaver? 
really feel it, and I'm sure a lot of people agree that Tom is the best pitcher in baseball. I like other pitchers in the league, and I just think that Tom is smart, smarter than most pitchers, and uh, young in years as far as experience, but he's old and experienced as long as knowing the hitters and knowing what uh, he can do and what he can't do. On the last day of the season, Seaver faced the St. Louis Cardinals in search of his 20th win and a new National League strikeout record for right-handed pitchers. When Lou Brock struck out to open the game, it indicated a trend for the rest of the evening. Signs go out, Seaver into the windup. And the pitch to Melendez. Fastball, strike three, ball, and Seaver has a brand new National League record. 284 strikeouts for the season, a Met record, and a National League mark by right hand pitchers. And it's acknowledged on the scoreboard here, and that gets a standing ovation for Tom Seaver. And the pitch. Fly ball in the air to deep left field. Back goes to Leon. He is under the waiting. The game is over. And Tom Seaver pitching brilliantly has won his 20th ball game of the year against only 10 losses. And with those 10 losses, the Mets scored a grand total of only 17 runs. A 20 game season, 289 strikeouts, and an unbelievable 1.76 earned run average made 1971 a year to remember for Tom Seaver. In this his ninth season with the Mets, Tom approached his 2000th career strikeout in midseason. The magic moment arrived with Dan Dreesen of the Cincinnati Reds at bat. Tom went to the breaking ball against Dreesen, got two quick strikes jamming him in on the hands, then went outside for number 2000. Seaver remembers it well. Well, getting my 2000 strikeout, it's, uh, it wasn't really just another number, but it's uh, it was in the middle of a tough ball game against Cincinnati, and uh, I, I was aware of it. I knew it would be number 2,000. It obviously is a big number, and, and uh, I, I think uh, I'll go on, hopefully, to strike out 3,000 people, and, and uh, 2,000 will be, have been just a step in that direction. On September 1st, with a gala holiday crowd cheering him on, Tom Seaver was on the verge of a strikeout record that would put him at the top of the cream of the crop. No major league pitcher had ever put together eight consecutive seasons of 200 plus strikeouts. Manny Sanguian is coming up. Walked and had a base hit. Swing and a miss. It's strike one. Sanguian is hitting 324. He is a tough man at the plate. Seaver now sets checks back over his shoulder. Deals to strike one. Pitch one on and miss. Came with a fastball. It's 0 2. And the crowd here is riding with Seaver on every pitch. They're very knowledgeable. They know exactly what the circumstances are with regard to records and everything else. Two strike count to Sagi and Seaver sets up now. Checks back over his shoulder. Here's the pitch. Well, and this. Check him out. An ovation for Seaver, who has struck out 200 batters. Rudy turns and tosses the ball over to the dugout. That'll be placed him on Seaver's souvenirs. He is the only pitcher in the history of Major League Baseball to strike out 200 or more batters in eight successive seasons. He's getting a standing ovation at Shea. Tom Seaver, the only pitcher in all the long history of Major League Baseball to strike out 200 or more batters in eight successive seasons. It was a great moment for Tom and one that he'll never forget. The Cincinnati Reds paid a visit to the Big Apple this week and picked up some ground in their pursuit of the Los Angeles Dodgers. But the big news in New York was that Tom Seaver was coming back to Shea Stadium for the first time since his celebrated trade. And the fans were there to welcome him. The long-awaited day brought a mixture of emotions. Well, I brought with me the, the, the good memories, the fun memories, you know, the enjoyable things. And I'll go, when I go back there, that's what I'll see. I'm not going to see the negative stuff at that place. I don't. I'm just not that kind of person. You know, I'm going to see my friends. I'm going to see uh, fans that have been there for 10 years and watched me for 10 years. And it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. It may have been fun for the fans to welcome back their old hero, but his uniform said Cincinnati. And it wasn't fun for the Mets to really discover how tough it is to hit Tom Seaver. That included his closest buddy, shortstop Bud Harrelson. What's he really like, Bud? 
He's just a super guy. He's been a roommate for eight years, and I've known him for 11 years, 12 years now. But uh, I think he'll bear down and do his job, and I'll bear down and do my job. That's, uh, that's where you separate friendship from, from uh, competitiveness. Harrelson did bear down with a base hit against his former roomie that set up the Mets' lone rally of the day. Rookie Steve Henderson, who's proving to be the big man for the Mets in the Zebra trade, proves it again with this ground ball through the right side, moving Harrelson around to third. And Ed Cranepool, the original Met, lifts a fly ball to left, deep enough to bring home the first run. However, one run was all that Tom Terrific would allow. And that proved to be unfortunate. Seaver and Jerry Kuzman have had a friendly wager going about their hitting prowess. And in this game, Seaver won bragging rights with a double to right center. Watch. But Seaver, Pete Rose, and the rest of the. It all added up to a typical Seaver victory. And through this summer of changes, one thing still remains the same for Seaver. I love the pitch. I really do. It is the most single exciting thing that I do. Exciting you are, Tom. And there are countless fans who really love to see you pitch. Best pitcher in baseball, George Thomas Seaver. Right now, you're looking at an historic moment. Tom Seaver. Of the New York Mets pitching to Art Howe the Astros. Howe belts it deep to left. Kingman goes back and hauls it in. Another win for Tom Seaver, but it's the last pitch he ever threw for the Mets. He knew it, his teammates knew it, and an era had come to an end. In a few days, the Met ace would be packing his bags for the Reds' country. Tom Terrific shut them out six to nothing without one runner reaching second base. And pitching wasn't all he gave to his new team. He proved he could also swing the bat, stroking two singles and driving in a pair of runs. Maybe Tom wanted to prove that he really belonged in this hard hitting team. The Reds know he belongs even if he never gets another base hit. Because if Tom Seaver pitches for them like he did for the Mets, three Cy Young awards, four 20 game seasons, the best lifetime ERA of any active pitcher, Cincinnati figures their chances of overhauling the Dodgers to be pretty good. The 0 2 pitch. Got it. You got a pretty good fastball. And that's the first thing you want to look for in Tommy because not that he can't win if he doesn't have it, but if Tom does have it, here's his high heat. That's all. He just blew him away. But if he does have the good fastball and he does feel good out there, then it makes it a little easier on him because he can get the fastball up high. He didn't have to work down. Brow raising. Kind of open mouth. If Randolph decides to go. Two strikes. Randolph does not go. Right there. Couldn't pull a trigger. And that'll take care of the Yankees here in the fourth. Nothing across. There were no hits. One arrow. Two men left. And after four, Sox got some work to do. They trail it one zip. Great intelligence. Great guile. He's protected his body. There's He's marvelous. Strike. And look at that. Called strike three. I assume, was it? Yes. Yes. Well, that's Meacham, not one of the world's greatest hitters. Seen it in spots where guys have pitched no hitters and visiting ballparks. They become enthralled in what's going on. The 2 2 pitch to Pasqua. Got him. Held on to by a fist. And another 1 2 3 inning for Seaver. That's the second in a row. Seaver throwing well. After six, Sox on top, 4 1. Excellent speed at the plate and Ricky Henderson.
second strike three. Could not pull the trigger on the breaking pit. Nancy Seaver, little Annie on the right with the Sox cap and Sarah. Boy, there's just a good hard slider. Three two pitch. Struck him out. Listen to the crowd. Look at that form. And look at this swing. We go to the ninth, and the White Sox lead it four to golf was robbed by Bain for the second out. And then a walk to Pagliarulo, and there is uh, former President Richard Nixon on his feet in the Yankee owner's box. Seaver is ready to work now to Don Baylor, and it's a high fly ball. It should be playable. Nichols is moving over. Nichols is there. The ball game is over. Seaver has won 300. He has become the 17th man in the history of baseball to win 300 games. Seaver will turn it loose now. Tom Seaver, look at the emotion spilling out all over. There's his family. And if you could hear him right now, his voice is up in such a high key, only the dogs can understand it. Well, he's a 40-year-old man, but this is a game for kids. And that kid is a very, very happy individual. He has done what only 16 others have accomplished, and this crowd is still on its feet with cheers for Tom Seaver. There he is. That's Nancy. That's his wife, Nancy Lynn. They were married in Jacksonville, Florida, the first year that he signed for professional baseball with the Mets. That's his daughter. That's his eldest daughter. Channing Seaver. Seaver, Seaver the Seaver. Channing, and with his father, he gives a great deal of credit to his father for teaching him concentration, dedication, work. A happy young man from Fresno, California. He began with the Mets in April of 1967 with his first victory, and here at the Sports Shrine of Yankee Stadium in New York, in New York, he has made it 300. He's doing many, many things, and he might at any time decide that he wants to pursue some of them right now. Who knows? Well, right. One more time, coming out of the dugout to receive the cheers of his hometown fans because Tom Seaver may be wearing that White Sox gray, but he has come home to win number 300. A curtain call. Phil Necro, who may himself be reaching 300 very soon. <laughs> <laughs> he patted uh, Phil on his stomach. Hey, uh, you're getting a little, little chubby there, old man. <laughs> well, Phil's got six years on him. <laughs> 295 for Necro. Keep Winfield in the park and keep Mattingly in the park. You know, this is a ballpark for home runs down the line. Uh, Winfield here, it's only, what, 312. Uh, you're, you're safe in left center or whatever. I didn't say, I didn't, you know, I just didn't take my time. Flying open, and, and I was really pretty good in the eighth inning. But uh, again, still nervous in the ninth inning. And, and uh, but just, just stay back and throw your normal pitch. And we, uh, you know, we know Baylor's fastball hitter inside, but I felt if I get some movement on the ball, I had a chance. Here's the reaction of Tom Seaver. Final out, bottom of the ninth inning. As Tommy picks up career victory number 300. Totals on the game for the White Sox. Four runs, 13 hits, one error. They stranded 10. For the Yankees, one run, six hits, no errors. They stranded eight. The winner, Seaver, 12 and 8 on the year. The loser, Cowley, 
He is nine and five. And of course, who else but Tom Seaver is the Nissan player of the game. One hundred dollars will be awarded to Tom's favorite charity. And here he comes. Tom Seaver going over to have an interview with Don Drysdale. We will carry that and chances are just hang with us. We don't know yet. We will probably carry the news conference the press conference as there's a man Phil Necro who has two hundred ninety four of his own. Making a little presentation to Tom. But we'll carry the interview and probably carry the news conference the press conference following the batting ninth, pitching warming up in the Mets bullpen number 14 Tom number 41. Saber. Five and seven with a two two one earned run average. Tom Seaver. It's a little crisp here today, and we were talking to Seaver before the ball game. He was saying it's a little bit like the weather at Fairbanks, Alaska, when he played for the Alaska Gold Panners, which he did, along with Kurt Moten, who is a member of the squad of these Baltimore Orioles. The Mets are putting their hopes on a return to full pitch and has thrown more change-ups this year than ever before. And he's been followed. I move back a little bit. He gets right up there. Swing and a miss. Seaver gets a strikeout. Batting in the second position. Planes throughout the afternoon. This will be a 2-2 pitch to Powell. Receiver in the inning. Decided. Well, he's bounded up into the air, and Seaver lets it drop. Now goes to first, and now they have a shot, but no throw at second. Seaver one to nothing in the time of the seventh. <laughs> Blew it right by him. An overpowering inning for Tom Seaver. At the end of six and a half from a World Series game, the manager of the Cubs. Seaver is getting tougher and tougher as this game goes along. The only other time it's ever happened. Earl Weaver was kicked out of this game in the third inning. Number nine. Evidently protesting a ball and One two delivery. Breaking hit struck him out. So we'll be going to the bottom of the tenth. Strikeout number six for Seaver. No runs, two hits. Leading right now five to three with two down. Simone on first. The two one pitch. There's a fly ball hit out to left. Waiting is Jones. The Mets are the world champion. Gary Kuzman being mobbed. Look at this scene. Two two delivery. Strike three and Seaver is going to challenge Bob Gibson's record tonight maybe. He struck out the side in the fifth. At fastball he's gone with two quick breaking balls to Jackson. Fastball struck him out. Ten strikeouts for Tom Seaver. The third time tonight he has struck out Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Seaver has struck out 11 and walked one. Struck him out. Strikeout number 12 for Tom Seaver. As there is a run, there are two hits. Too far behind is Cincinnati's Tom Seaver, who made history of his own against St. Louis as he struck out former batting champion Keith Hernandez. For the three-time Cy Young Award winner, it was career strikeout number 3,000, making him only the fifth pitcher ever to reach that exalted level. Take a bow, Tom. After 14 seasons, man, you've earned it. <laughs> 